Translation is not the end of protein synthesis. Newly synthesized polypeptide chain undergoes a series of post-translational processing. Protein modification include modifications of amino acids as well as protein structural changes. Modifications of amino acids include lipidation. Meristolation refers to the attachment of the 14-carbon saturated fatty acid meristic acid, typically to the N-terminal glycine residue of a protein. Palmitolation refers to the addition of the 16-carbon saturated fatty acid palmitic acid, typically to the N-terminal cysteine residue. Prenylation refers to the addition of prenyl groups, including farnesyl and geranyl geranyl, both of which are components of the intermediates of cholesterol biosynthesis. They are typically attached to the C-terminal cysteine residue. Finally, glypiation or GPI-linked refers to the attachment of glycosyl phosphatidyl inositol, which is a sugar phospholipid, usually attached to a C-terminal. Phosphorylation usually occurs at serine, threonine, and tyrosine residue. It is essential to enzyme regulation. Iodination occurs at the tyrosine residue. It is an important step in the formation of the thyroid hormone thyroxine. Ubiquitination refers to the addition of the protein ubiquitin, usually at the lysine residue, which targets a protein to degradation, which will be talked about in a moment. Carboxylation of the gamma carbon occurs at the glutamate residue. It is essential for the formation of the blood clotting factor prothrombin, which requires vitamin K. Glycosylation refers to the attachment of carbohydrate side chains of glycoproteins, which can either be attached to nitrogen or oxygen. And glycosylation occurs at the asparagine residue in the asparagine X serine or threonine sequence, where X is any amino acid except proline. This sequence is important in protein folding and protein targeting. And glycosylation is facilitated by UDP as a sugar carrier for glucnac, which stands for n acetylglucosamine which is inhibited by tunica mycin, a mimic of UDP glucnac. And glycosylation is also facilitated by dolicophosphate, which is an isoprenoid that functions as sugar carriers for mannose and glucose. O-glycosylation occurs at serine, threonine, and hydroxylysine residues, which functions in immunity recognition and bone flexibility. Hydroxylation typically occurs at lysine and proline residue, such as in collagen, which requires vitamin C. Acetylation occurs at the lysine tail of histone to promote the euchromatin structure. It is an important mechanism in chromatin remodeling, which I've talked about in my previous video on transcription. Methylation also occurs at the lysine residue. Methylysine and dimethylysine are found in muscle proteins as well as cytochrome C, whereas trimethylysine is a component of calmodulin, a calcium binding protein abbreviated as CAM, as well as a precursor to carnitine biosynthesis. ADP ribosylation is the addition of one or more ADP ribose moieties to a protein, which is important in various cellular processes, including cell signaling, DNA repair, gene regulation, and apoptosis. It is also the basis for various toxins, such as cholera toxin, which catalyzes ADP ribosylation of G protein, resulting in continuous CAMP production as well as diphtheria toxin, which facilitates ADP ribosylation of thifamide of eukaryotic elongation factor 2, inactivating translocation during eukaryotic translational elongation. Protein structural changes include addition of prosthetic or permanently bound cofactors, which is required for many enzymes, such as biotin of acetyl-CoA carboxylase and heme group of hemoglobin or cytochrome C. Many proteins also undergo proteolytic cleavage. They are initially synthesized as large inactive precursors known as cymogens and will later be cleaved by proteases into the active form. For example, proinsulin is cleaved to insulin. Some proteins form intrachain or interchain disulfide bridges between cysteine residues. It is common for proteins to be exported from cells, which helps protect native conformation of protein molecule from denaturation. The last step of protein structural changes involves the loss of N-terminus signal sequence, which is part of the protein targeting process, which will be discussed shortly. Proteins carry out specific functions in various parts of the cell and in specialized organelles. Therefore, proteins synthesized on ribosomes need to be targeted to their final cellular destinations. Recall in biology, we've learned that a section of endoplasmic reticulum, known as the rough ER, contains bound ribosomes that synthesize proteins for the endomembrane system and the secretory proteins. 
Polypeptide synthesis always begins on the free ribosome in the cytosol. The synthesis will finish in the cytosol unless the N-terminus signal sequence directs eukaryotic ribosome co-translationally to the rough endoplasmic reticulum, which occurs in a series of seven steps. First, the initiation of protein synthesis begins on the free ribosome. Signal sequence appears early in the synthetic process because it's at the amino terminus, which is synthesized first. Signal recognition protocol, abbreviated as SRP, recognizes signal sequence and binds the ribosome. SRP then binds GTP and holds elongation of the polypeptide when it's about 7 amino acids long and the signal sequence has completely emerged from the ribosome. GTP-bound signal recognition particle directs the ribosome and the incomplete polypeptide to the cytosolic phase of the endoplasmic reticulum. GTP-bound SRP receptors, known as SEC61, binds SRP. The ribosome receptor binds ribosome. And the peptide translocation complex, abbreviated as PTC, located on the ER membrane translocate nascent polypeptide to the ER lumen. GTP hydrolysis of both SRP and SRP receptor trigger SRP to dissociate from the ribosome. Elongation of polypeptide resumes. The GTP-driven translocation complex feeds the growing polypeptide chain into the ER lumen until the complete protein has been synthesized. Signal peptidase cleaves off the N-terminus signal sequence within the ER lumen, and the ribosomes dissociate and is recycled. Bacteria follows a homologous mechanism for translocation of ribosome to the plasma membrane. They also use signal sequence at the amino terminus of proteins to bind SRP receptors known as FTSY, and the elongating polypeptide is translocated by SecYEG translocon. The N-terminus signal sequence is also cleaved off once the protein is translocated. The N-terminus signal sequence, which directs polypeptide co-translationally to the ER, includes one or more possibly charged residues usually near amino terminus, followed by 15 to 30 hydrophobic amino acid residues, and a short sequence at the carboxyl terminus that is relatively polar, with alanine close to the cleavage site. Signal sequences that will be cleaved after it reaches destination will be indicated in asterisk. Proteins targeted to the nucleus contain nuclear localization sequence, abbreviated as NLS, which contains internal basic amino acids such as arginine and lysine, as well as proline. It is not cleaved when it reaches destination. Proteins targeted to peroxisomes contain peroxisomal targeting signal, abbreviated as PTS. PTS1 contains C-terminus SKL sequence, which stands for serine, lysine, and leucine. Proteins targeted for mitochondria contains mitochondrial targeting signal, abbreviated as MTS, also known as pre-sequences. Although mitochondria contain DNA, most of their proteins are encoded by nuclear DNA and must be targeted. The MTS is located on the N-terminus, and it contains 10 to 70 amino acid long alternating pattern of hydrophobic and possibly charged amino acids that form amphipathic helix. MTS is cleaved once it reaches mitochondrial matrix. Bacteria can export their proteins to their inner or outer membranes or to the extracellular medium. This occurs post-translationally. First, cytosolic chaperone sec B binds newly translated unfolded polypeptide and folds it. Next, sec B delivers polypeptide to sec A, a protein associated with the sec YG translocation complex in the bacterial cell membrane. Sec B is released and sec A inserts itself into the membrane forcing about 20 amino acid residues of the protein to be exported through SecYEG. SEC8 then hydrolyzes ATP, causing SEC8 to withdraw from the membrane, releasing the polypeptide. SEC8 binds another ATP, and the next stretch of 20 amino acid residues is pushed across the membrane through the SecYEG complex. These steps are repeated until the entire protein passes through. In eukaryotes, proteins move from the endoplasmic reticulum to the cis side of Golgi apparatus in transport vesicles. In the Golgi complex, oligosaccharides are linked to some proteins, and the sorting of proteins to their final destination occurs on the trans side of Golgi apparatus. Some proteins are targeted for secretion and membrane. Proteins targeted for lysosome have N-linked mannose 6 phosphate residue, which is abbreviated as M6P. If proteins are targeted back to the endoplasmic reticulum, it contains C-terminus KDEL sequence, which stands for lysine, aspartate, glutamate, leucine. Other proteins are synthesized in the cytosol by free ribosomes and are targeted to the respective locations 
by the signal sequences mentioned before, including NLS, PTS, and MTS. Finally, the last type of post-translational processing involves protein degradation, which prevents the buildup of abnormal or unwanted proteins and permits the recycling of amino acids. Bacterial proteins are degraded by ATP-dependent long protease, which is activated by defective proteins or those with rapid turnover. Two ATP is hydrolyzed per peptide bond cleaved. Eukaryotic proteins can be degraded by two mechanisms. Ubiquitin-dependent proteolysis typically degrades defective proteins and those with characteristically short half-lives by recognizing polyubiquitinated proteins. Ubiquitination involves three enzymes. E1, or the activating enzyme, attaches the free carboxyl of ubiquitin C-terminus glycine via thioester bond. Ubiquitin is transferred to E2 conjugating enzyme. E3 ligase then catalyzes the transfer of ubiquitin from E2 to target, linking ubiquitin through mi isopeptide bond to the epsilon amino group of a lysine residue of the target protein. Polyubiquitination is recognized by 26S proteasome which consists of two 90S caps and a 20S core. The 90S cap recognizes and binds to ubiquitinated proteins. 90S then unfolds and deubiquitinates the proteins. Finally, the 20S degrades the proteins. Eukaryotic proteins can also be degraded by lysosome, which typically recycles the amino acids of membrane proteins, extracellular proteins, and proteins with characteristically long half-lives. As mentioned earlier, Golgi apparatus adds N-linked mannose 6-phosphate to proteins that are targeted to the lysosome.